What's good guys? You know who is this? This is your boy Carlos the Colombian guy. Welcome to my YouTube channel once again. And today I would like to bring you the latest updates about my beautiful city, Cartagena, Colombia. And if you all don't want to lose any details about the current situation in my city, please stay with me. So let me just go ahead, let me just speak facts so my intro won't take so long because Cholón, the party island in Cartagena, Colombia, is about to be shut down by the mayor and his people. And the reason why is because Cholón has been causing a lot of problems for the major, you know, it benefits a lot of people from their community, but it's also, you know, causing a lot of issues, you know what I mean? And one of the current situations that happen is like few weeks, so a tourist, a guy, he lost his life in Shalom a few days ago. I also post this new, you know, in the short. So this is the reason why, you know, that the government, the mayor is trying to shoot down Shalom. But it's going to be a huge problem with the locals, you know, all of that. But let me jump in the article. Let me read this for you all. And this is her, like this. The attorney general office as the mayor office to consider suspending tourist activities in Chile. The shock is still continuing after the tragic death of Juan David Cervantes Vega, the young 20 years old Ajonero who was seriously injured in one of his extremities by a boat propelled last Sunday, June 2nd, on the island of Shillon. After this unfortunate event, the authorities have already warned about the actions that the mayor office of Cartagena and the competent institution at that point in the Iceland area must stay to guarantee the safety of visitors and their community in general. In that sense, the provincial attorney office of Cartagena expressed in a statement that the district administration together with other competent institutions must intervene on the island to guarantee the control. It is recommended to evaluate the suspension of the activities in the Shalom area until the adequate conditions are guaranteed for deportation of tourist beach actors and the community in general, he indicate all the measures requested by the public ministry are aimed at uh, protecting the environment, controlling the carrying capacity of the path, guaranteeing medical assistance service on the island, having a maritime ambulance available, control the vessels and having human capital of to the life work service in so this is the current situation with Shalom, and I know you guys would be mad behind the screen and might say the mayor, you know, the government is trying to bother people, the mayor is shipping all the time, but the, the real thing is like, you know, the mayor, the government, they feel like they need to have more control over Shalom. And the reason why they say that is because it's not a secret and it's speaking fast that a lot of people, they get scammed in Shalom, you know, like from a lot of locals, not all the locals, because I don't want to say all the locals, you know, been scamming tourists in Shalom because it's not like that. I know a lot of great people, amazing people that work in Shalom and they always give, give me good service and they get to my clients, you know, an amazing, great service, you know what I mean? But unfortunately, they've been creating a bad reputation for Shalom. Like, you know, like you don't have to pay with car, you know, stuff like that. So, you know, it's just a lot of things, you know what I mean? And now, you know, since a tourist lose, lose his life over there, that is not something new. It's been happening, you know, all the time. So they think like, you know, they consider that they had to shoot down. They had to do something more, like more strong to Shalom and stuff like that. And honestly, you know, I don't really know how this going to end because I know the local from Shalom, they break and they go fight for the territories because, you know, like this is not a fight that they've been fighting like for like since two years ago, five years ago. I know and I've been hearing like people in Shalom, the locals, you know, like they've been fighting for that land, for, for that land of Shalom for a long time because it's not a secret that it's located, it's located, you know, in a, in a, in a good area. You know, the line is kind of perfect to build a hotel, you know, stuff like that. And also, you know, the locals, they've been, you know, like people that are trying to buy the land in Shalom, 
They've been offering the money, stuff like that, but they always reject. And I don't blame them because, you know, like, that's the way how they make money. And if they get, so like, I'm not, uh, like you know, like, few few hundred dollars or something, you know, a few, few million pesos, you know, they can spend that and then what's next, you know. I don't really know how this is going to end. But like I say, you know, I honestly think, like, it would take a time because the government, they're trying to build a police session. They're trying to set it up by ambulance. Then they're trying to set up, you know, a lot of things, you know what I mean, and I don't know, like I say, how this is going to end, but, you know, I'm going to keep you guys updates. But, you know, honestly, you know, it's not like, like, Chalong is not the only place, you know, for you to party in the island. You know, there is a lot of great and amazing place, but the vibe that Chalong has is difficult to find in a lot of places because they won't allow you, they won't allow tourists to do what they were doing, what they've been doing in Chalong because it's not, it's not shoot down yet. And, you know, I, I don't really know when they're going to do it, but, you know, that's what they've been talking about. It's kind of secure, you know, that they're going to do it, you know what I mean? But let's jump in the other story, you know what I mean? Hey, hold on, hold on, because I also have more information for you because three Jamaican citizens, they have been captured in the city of Cartagena, Colombia. The police arrest them when they were trying to make a business and it wasn't about sell jerk chicken, none of that. It wasn't about to open a restaurant. So let me jump in the article. Let me read this with Joel and this several like this. The Metropolitan Police of Cartagena captured recently to three foreigners from Jamaica who were staying in a hotel in El Bosque neighborhood in the southwest of the city. Those captures were left at the disposal of the Attorney General Office for the crime. So this is the number three and I'm ready to go guys. Let me just go ahead, let me just speak fast because a tourist in Cartagena, Colombia, he got the millionaire walk. And if you guys don't know what was the millionaire walk, let me just explain y'all. So millionaire walk is when you catch a service, you know, like a Uber, taxi or anywhere, you know, and then you got robbed by the driver. So this is the same thing that happened to these tourists. And it didn't happen in a taxi, it happened in a Uber and the events occur in the international airport of Cartagena, Rafael Nunez, when the tourists jump in an Uber. So let me just go ahead. Let's so let's read this story. Let me jump in the article and this is thorough like this. This is how foreign tourists survive a millionaire walk in Cartagena after taking a transfer service on a digital platform. Three criminals were captured at more than 3 million pesos recovered by the police. In the last few hours, the Cartagena Metropolitan Police fall a robbery in the form of a millionaire ride from a foreign tourist in the Crespo neighborhood. The incident of insecurity originated in the Crespo neighborhood where a tourist of Israeli nationality who set foot in the city for the first time was targeted of criminals according to their foreigner story to their police he took a service in a private vehicle through a digital platform in front of the Rafa Nunez International Airport. However, during the trip, two more criminals got into the vehicle and um, using violence forced the tourists to withdraw money from an electronic ATM. After the robbery, the criminals left the tourists abandoned on a street in Boca Grande Thanks to the help of passengers by Death Rainer was able to notify the surveillance patrols who activate a lock plan and a quick deployment. They intercepted the vehicle in the Crespo neighborhood and captured the three assailants. In the operations, authorities recovered more than 3 million stolen pesos, two cell phones, and a white vehicle with the license JCK. Where the criminals travel, the detainees were identified by the police with the alias of El Tramitador, El Loquillo, and El Omar. And according to the authorities, they already had a dirty background. Those captures, along with the vehicle and the seized objects, were placed at the disposal of the Attorney General Office. Currently, they are waiting for preliminary hearings to define the legal situation. The authorities are also investigating the possible participation of these individuals in all the crimes under the modalities of millionary right.
So guys, I feel like I had to apologize y'all because I won't be able to post the entire news and it's not cause of me, it's cause of YouTube because you know the rules, politics that YouTube have, you know, sometimes it doesn't allow me to post, you know, like I can post, I can post the entire article if I want to, but sometimes, you know, it's risking myself that they mark the video, you know, as offensive, you know, stuff like that. And I don't want to deal with it because it's a lie, you know, it's getting frustrated sometimes. So, you know, but at the end of the day, I understand, you know, that what they trying to do, you know, that's the job, you know, I respect that. Same thing I'm doing my job, they're doing theirs, you know what I mean? So, but I'm going to leave all the description, in the description of my video, I'm going to leave all the links. So to all this news, so you guys can go there and click the links and it will take you to read the entire news without missing nothing. You know what I mean? Because unfortunately, because our friend YouTube, I won't be able to do that. And like I say, I had to apologize y'all for that. But you know, fortunately, it is what it is. And we had to follow. I had to follow YouTube. You know what I mean? So guys, this is the current situation with all this case, you know, it was a crazy, crazy week in Cartagena, Colombia, guys. But hey, before I leave, I would like to speak facts about, about three things that I would like to tell you all. And the first one is, I don't have nothing against Shalom. I don't have nothing against the brothers that got captured. And I don't have nothing against the Uber in the city. My idea with my channel is to speak facts, you know, bring the updates, you know what I mean? Bring topics. So I don't have nothing against none of this. This is no personal, you know what I mean? Because sometimes people get it twisted. They tell, oh, you know, this is personal or something. He just trying to talk bad things about, you know, several, some things, you know. No, I don't like to do that. I just like to speak facts, you know. I bring, I bring, you know, the reality of the current situation in Colombia, Cartagena, Medellin, you know, all of that. So don't take it personal, please. So guys, you know, that was all, all for today. I'ma let you go now. Hey, thanks for everything. Thanks for your support. Thanks for watching me all the time. You know, thanks for thanks for everything. You know, none of this would be possible without you watching me behind the screen all the time, giving me views, you know what I mean? And I won't get up. You know, I try to do my best all the time because I'm a warrior, you know. So hey, thanks for everything. I'ma let you go now. This was your boy Carlos. The Colombian guy, boom, boom, boom.